Hello YouTube, what is up? Connor Brooks here, back with another review for you. Uh, yes, I know it's been a while since I've done a last review, and that is because I have not been purchasing locomotives to review. Um, it turns out to do that, you need, like, money? Who knew? So, um, we, um, as a family decided to take a break, but now we did find a locomotive that we thought was worth buying, and I think you'll agree with me by the end of this video. It is the Rapido HO Scale Amtrak F40PH locomotive. I have been searching for this locomotive for over seven months, and that is because the non-modernized versions are kind of rare now because they were created like three years ago and Rapido didn't make that many. And so I was so lucky to have found this one on eBay and win the bid. I am so happy. So let's get right into this review, starting with the unboxing. Um, so I actually have the cover off the box because one-handed is it's not coming off. So this is the uh, this is the box uh, cover. Uh, Rapido is actually uh, one of the only companies that I've seen that actually puts a prototypical picture of the model on the front. Now this isn't the model. Um, that I have. This is just a picture of a Amtrak F40PH locomotive. But I still think it's really cool to have that on the box. Now, if you see here, it says the most accurate model ever produced of the iconic Amtrak F40PH locomotive. So I think from the research that I've done and looking at this in person, I think they might just be right. Um, so this is the F40PH Phase 2, number 214, with DC, DCC, and ESU lock sound equipped. So, we'll get into that. Um, so, let's see. Now we have the actual box. So, this is what you get when you take the um, uh, cover off the box. You get your instruction manual, which is quite a hefty manual, and that is because, you see this, I can't read that, but... English on the other side, so I'm assuming that this means French on the other side, and since a lot of people in Canada speak French, uh, they have a French side. Um, this is a Canadian company, and while Fran French isn't the national language of Canada, a lot of people speak it, so they did that. Um, exploded parts diagram with every single part on this locomotive. There are 157 parts, I believe, and plus, you know, that's just part numbers there's probably extra like as you can see the speaker there's two there's nine screws so there's there's a lot of parts to this locomotive and you'll see it also comes with a decal sheet um if you want to renumber your locomotive um this comes in every box whether you get a numbered version or you get an unnumbered version so i think that's pretty cool and there's also this uh yellow protective sheet i think that goes over the decals there so then you have uh then your locomotive is under here so you take the foam out and this is where your locomotive would be and so it's just like a standard locomotive. You take it out of the plastic shell, maybe. Front, which means this is the back, which means I should go this way. Just so you can see, then you pull this, and then you lift that up, and the locomotive comes out. Now, this locomotive um, was bought used, so but it looks almost as new, and it was only used for display. So it's as if I bought a new locomotive. So it still even comes with the original um, extra parts from the factory. Um, these are... Uh, they're like window uh, shields, window gates, something like that. Um, I don't really know what they were used for. I couldn't find uh, much information about them, though they were used in urban areas. But I'm pretty sure it was just to protect the windows. Now, again, I'm not sure. Um, okay, I want to talk about this um, instruction manual for a little bit because it's actually very informational. And if you ever buy one of these, I highly recommend you reading this because it it tells you all about how uh, standby and um, hep mode which we'll we'll get into in a which we'll get into in a minute so we'll we'll go through this um, once we get to the layout so let's go ahead and look at the locomotive and here she is in all her pride and glory um, we're not, not exactly able to see the trucks you might be able to see that now there is just so much detail on this locomotive. It is astounding. Rapido also, <clears throat> Rapido also even does underbody detail. So there's hoses um, and everything that would be under the locomotive. Um, so let's just 
talk a little bit, I guess we can do a little bit of history of this locomotive. Um, this locomotive, the F40PH, was produced in 1975, or the first one by EMD, and then of course there have been many variations by GMD and a bunch of other companies. <clears throat> but Amtrak originally bought 38 of these locomotives, and what they were going to do is they were going to use them on um, short haul um, routes like in California and on the Northeast Corridor in the Boston area. But with their aging and um, not necessarily safe STP-40Fs, I believe that's what they are, um, with many derailments and whatnot, they realized that they could replace those locomotives with this locomotive, and this locomotive became the face of Amtrak. This is one of the most recognizable locomotives of Amtrak, and then, of course, uh, the P-42s uh, replaced this locomotive. So... I did some research and found out what F40PH actually stands for, so I just wanted to tell you that because I think it's cool. Uh, the F stands for a full body cowl length, uh, the 40 is the series, P stands for passenger, and H stands for HEP equipped, which we will get into. So going off the, actually wait, let's do the detail first. Um, so on the front there are MU hoses, hoses, all that good junk. Um, Rapido coupler, um, which is compatible with most modern-day HO scale stock. Um, there is a snow plow, um, headlight, headlight, um, lit number boards, and I already have the track power applied, so the number boards are just lit. Um, I believe this is a Nathan, what is it, P5 horn. Um, well, I'll I'll clarify that when we go into the um, manual. Um, Windshield wipers, um, they're lit classification lights, which we'll see. Um, up here, there is lit um, uh, lit uh, strobe lights, um, and they go automatically with the bell, or you can push F6, and they will go by themselves. Um, as you can see up here, there is a lot of uh, detail on the roof. Um, there's brake fans, and I believe this is the dynamic brake fan. Um, and if you kind of blow on it, it actually does turn, which I think is pretty cool. Um, there's also a bunch of vents up here, which um, they are not see-through. Well, the back one is sort of see-through, but not like all the way through. Um, there is a detailed uh, cab inside. Uh, I don't think this is going to focus, but there is a detailed um, cab interior. Um, going on to the side, um, there's step ladders for the get up to the door. Um, there's uh, handles. Um, Truck detail, which I've already mentioned, is fantastic. Um, this is the uh, fuel fuel tank. Um, I don't really know what's next to it, but like I said, Rapido has a lot of underbody detail, so I really have no idea. Um, there is something here, but I have no idea what that is, and that's not going to focus, so it's not important. Um, so then going on to the back, uh, 214, like I said. And then this is the only handrails on the locomotive, and these are sturdy. And so that is really awesome. Um, there's step ladders going up to the roof, um, sand filler hatch, back door, um, more hoses down here. And just like I've said, all around great detail. Now, I did see a review that said if everything is like off, if you, um, if you have like, there's like a... I think they said there's like a maybe a cab light or something, and it even lights up like the steps here. Now, I don't know if that's true. I haven't been able to test that. And so then over here is the exact, uh, is the exact same. Um, so I think that does it for uh, detail. I mean, it's a very detailed locomotive. I'd be able to sit here for hours talking about all the detail in this locomotive. So uh, let's move on to the, before we get to sounds, let's talk about um, HEP uh, standby and all that. That's the French side. So it even talks about if you press F4 and don't press F5, your locomotive will not move. Um, so according to Rapido, um, according to Rapido, what they want is they want to be as prototypical as possible. See, prototypical operation DCC. So essentially F4, you can take a look here. F4 is standby. So standby is um, when you're sitting at the station and so... Uh, the locomotive, when you're sitting at a long time, the uh, locomotive needs to be able to give heat and whatnot to the um, the train cars. So standby mode um, is revved up to 700 RPM, somewhere around there, 
and then run mode is then up to 893, 39, something like that, um, RPM, which is the full RPM. So it's as if you're running the locomotive at full notch 8, except your locomotive isn't moving. And we will go into that um, once we get into the sounds. And this was just because the way that the head and power was controlled um, by this locomotive was like through the... It wasn't, it was by like the actual generator. I don't really know the specifics. All I know is that the locomotive was nicknamed the Screamer because of this, and you will definitely see why. Now, one thing about Rapido that is really awesome, they, they, they just like to throw in little jokes which make the hobby a little more fun because, you know, sometimes the hobby is pretty serious and it's, it's fun to laugh a little. So like the break-in period. No, we do not mean you should break into your buddy's layout room so you can take his Rapido F40 locomotive. And don't stand in a Santa outfit ringing a bell of your ringing a bell for your hobby budget. That money is not supposed to be for model train purchases. Go get a job. So, you know, they're just they're having a little fun in the hobby, which I think is nice. And also with some of the um, some of the functions you'll see. Um, so this is the whole like prototypical DCC HEP mode. So and a bunch of other stuff which uh, we won't really get into. Um, I do want to see, um, where is, there was one part where it said, um, oh, here's the master volume, by the way. Let's talk about that. It is really quiet, so I have already, um, changed the sound, so it's a lot louder. Um, they said that they just feel like most locomotive models are set absolutely loud out of the box. Um, there was one part where I saw that 15 through 19, like the functions, oh, here we go. 15 through 19. There is no F15 through F19. Pressing those function function buttons will be detrimental to your health and that of everyone you know. So I just think that's really fun. So I'm going to use this a quick start guide to go over the sounds. All right, and let's get into it. So to start any ESU lock sound locomotive, you have to push F8. So... So there you go. So let's first go over the uh, sounds. Uh, we'll do bell and then you'll be able to see the strobe lights. So there you go. You can see the strobe lights. Horn. I really love this horn. Both the bell and the horn are absolutely amazing for this locomotive. That is one of the um, <clears throat> reasons why I really wanted this locomotive. Not just for the detail, but for the sounds. They are amazing. ESU really did good. Um, F3 is a Doppler horn. I think this is pretty cool, so we'll listen to it. So as you can see, it has the... Um, <clears throat> Thanks, train. As you can see, it has the uh, Doppler effect to it, which is cool. Um, okay, so before we go um, in and out of standby, um, let's just do the strobe lights real quick. If you push F6, the strobe lights just go without any bell or anything. All right, so when you're lo when you just if you don't push F4 or 5, your locomotive will run just like a steam uh, a diesel locomotive. So you know, revs up. But <clears throat> but we're going to go ahead and put it in standby mode. So F4, this is when you're sitting at a station. It's going to rev up to about notch 6. So there you go. So, like it says, your locomotive will not move if you only push F4, and they're not wrong. So, this is when you're sitting at a station, and then we're going to go into run mode. And so now your locomotive will move. So anyway... You can obviously see why these were nicknamed the Screamers, because that is absolutely loud. 
And if you know anything about a locomotive, you know in real life that is super loud. So we're going to go ahead and take it out of both of these modes. So, <clears throat> oh, I guess it would have been important to turn the headlight on. F0. Um, let's see. F7 says it dims the headlights. There you go. Uh, you dim it when you're going into the station, and then you brighten it before you go. Um, F8 is start up, shut down, and mute. F9 is the dynamic brake. Just kidding. F9 is the... Okay, well, thanks, Rapido, for... Oh, they made a mistake. F14 is the dynamic brake. Okay, well, this is the um, classification lights, which work, by the way, for push-pull service. Um, I do not know how to get this red light in the center to work. I have no idea if it works or not. So, anyway, then it says strobe. Okay, so those are the functions, the normal functions. And then I did say I wanted to go over F15 through F19. So here's F15. F16. Security clearance level 3 or above is required to access files. F17. Inquiries regarding command functions are no longer accepted from your present location. F18. Sir, I protest. I am not a merry man. And my favorite, F19. Yes, the locomotive just did that. Um, so it's mentioning that the backup light, the like the light on the back will not come on unless you are switching cars. Um, there is a F12, a holster or switching lighting, um, but I have not been able to figure out if how that works. So there's, I don't really know why it's not working, but it's it's not important to me. So let's go ahead and back this up. So this is speed step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then there is brakes, and they release, and then we'll go ahead and we'll just do like a regular um, bell on two short. Blast and we'll move forward. Speed step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there was a grade crossing sequence there for you, just so you could hear that don't want to run into the other train. All right, let's just bring this back. So as you can see, I'm just running it as if it's like a freight locomotive. Um, I'm just running it with a small passenger train over here, so I have no need to be in um, like HEP mode or whatever. But I just wanted to do a quick review on this locomotive because I love it and wanted to share it with you guys. So. I really like this locomotive, um, if you like this locomotive too, if you can find one, I so highly recommend it. Now, Rapido is coming out with a whole new run of modernized um, F40 PHs uh, with ditch lights and everything starting either at the end of this year or next year, but they have a lot of um, paint schemes. Um, they even have the Virginia Rail Express, which I think is pretty cool because there's not very much HO scale Virginia Rail Express stuff. So, I'm just going to end it with saying thank you for uh, watching the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment down below. Alright, thank you so much. Have a great day.